was in my 20s and the 70s, there wasn't this divide between surfing and motorcycle cultures. Basically, everyone I knew had, a, if you surfed, you had a motorbike because they were they were just great fun, and they, they were not seen as being culturally different. You know, back in the 70s, like yeah, guys who, they, if they had a surfboard, they had a motorbike. There was no um, putting yourself in a box to just do one thing. Like, and especially in Bali, because it's motorbikes. Uh, and scooters especially are our main form of transport. Every surfer you see around has surfboard racks on their bikes. So for us, like, it just makes sense, you know? They were both a thrill. That was the idea. People say, oh, so you ride your motorbike to the beach. They said, no, that's not the point. You, they're both a thrill, and they were pursued as a thrill. That was a, it was the marketing of the surf companies and the motorcycle companies that created this divide between the two things. And I think when I began Deus with Carby Tuckwell and Rod Hunwick, that was the idea, was that we would combine these elements together and try to get this idea across that in your life you can do all sorts of things, but you should do them fully and well, and, uh, and but, you know, cross-pollinate. And I think um, in, in Bali, you can see that working very well. Deus Bali came about as an offshoot of what we've, we've been doing here in Camperdown for five years or six years now. The thing about Bali that is interesting is that it gives you a freedom that is very hard to find here in Australia in our over-regulated society. The, the trilogy of things that we pursue here are the motorbikes, and they're old-school motorbikes, simple, easy to use. They're not toys, but, you know, they're not sort of death traps either. Um, then the whole single-speed, old kids going out and buying some old guy's track frame and then putting new parts on it. And then in surfing, the whole idea came along of going back to young guys were using old logs and old school shapes but riding them in a contemporary in a learning how to ride them in a new sort of way it wasn't a bunch of sad old baby boomers sitting around reminiscing it was young guys learning how to do things in a, in a more interesting way and i think that's what i wanted deus to be Look, we didn't want to become a surfboard company um, because it's, it's a pretty grim business but we wanted to be able to experiment and do things and invite people to try stuff and really kind of, it was more the, the doing of it that was more interesting than producing 500 surfboards a month. Thomas Beckson's gone there, Chris Garrett's gone there, Ellis Erickson's gone there, Tyler Warren's gone there, and, you know, and, and they love it because it's a chance, it's in Bali, they can have fun, they can shape the boards, go and test them down the road, and, you know, and there's, there's a terrific, you know, there's an enthusiasm for the, for the project. Temple of Enthusiasm is just a place where enthusiasm is, is the order of the day. But basically it's a, it's a, a, a communal space for like-minded people um, to just do stuff, you know? Within the Temple of Enthusiasm we have you know, um, a, big, a big store, we have an art gallery, we have a, a full motorcycle garage where we customise and build motorcycles. Um, we do have a restaurant and a bar. Um, we have a, a great retail space that has motorcycles and art and clothing and, and um, surfboards and kind of everything that we're kind of into. Surfboard shaping and finishing area, uh, which we use all, uh, every day. We, you know, we have an uh, artisan residence program. We have a photo studio. But yeah, there's just a lot of different facets to the temple, and, and um, just, you know, I, I would think it's. It's a great place to hang out and um, everybody collaborate and make cool stuff. Yeah. Little Groms, like, you know, anywhere from one and a half to like five year olds running around this place, you know, and on, a, on a Sunday afternoon, you can see it in the afternoon, they're just running around all over. You know, then it jumps up to like the, the you know, kind of 12, 13, 14 year old Groms that are here generally every day doing something and they're building bikes out the back. You got us older dudes, you know, and there's even a generation above me. Um, that, and it really, age isn't really an issue, you know? The only issue we come by sometimes is uh, we have a, a thing called DWS, and it's called Deus Wife Syndrome, <laughs> where the wives get a little bit jealous that the kids and, and, and their husbands and boyfriends are sm spend maybe a little bit too much time up here. So, um, yeah, but overall, like, I think it's just a great place for all ages, you know? The freedom that you get there is extraordinary. I mean, 
you know, on Tuesday nights I have free tattoos, real tattoos, not stick-on ones, <laughs> and, and tacos and a mariachi band. I mean, you, you could not even dream of doing that here. The bike gangs would blow you up for a start, let alone the health department. But there, that's no problem. It's fun and it's free, and, and I think as the world becomes increasingly overregulated, um, that that spirit of that freedom becomes more and more tangible and important. It's always got to have that vibe, you know, and, and it is, it's as soon as we get too prestigious or we take it too serious, then, yeah, it doesn't work anymore. But most people just have preconceived ideas, and to me, the, mo the most fun of this is challenging preconceived notions, because the minute people can pigeonhole you, they can dismiss you, but if you keep them guessing, they will keep coming back to find out what the hell you're doing next. And I think that's a pretty basic marketing philosophy here is, is they can, nobody could ever figure out what the hell we're up to.